record straight. You and me, we ain't nothing alike. Let's set the record straight. Those words you say, they hold no way they like. Let's set the record straight. You'll never break the man before. Hello everyone and welcome back to another very awesome custom diecast review. This is easily one of my favorite Xfinity diecasts I have ever made. It was very challenging, I'm not going to lie. But if you did not recognize this incredible finish to a really good race at Bristol back in 2021, this is the AJ Allmendinger uh, Barger Precast, I think, or yeah, I think, I think that's how it is. I, everything's damaged on it, so it's kind of hard to tell, uh, but yeah. This was a very interesting win. Him and Cindric slid side by side across the line. Of course, you know, Almendinger just happened to be first. If you have not seen that win, look up AJ Almendinger 2021 Bristol. You will find it, and it is a really nice finish. So, uh, pretty interesting. And if you are curious, yes, I will be making the Austin Cindric second place car. And I will be making it very soon. If you're wondering how I'm going to make it, I'm going to simply use. Uh, the, what was it, was it the 20, yeah, it was the 2020 Phoenix win. I'm going to use that paint scheme, because honestly, it's very similar. There's a lot of damage on that car, but on that right side, it looks exactly like the Phoenix one. Honestly, the only thing that's really kind of off is that left quarter panel, where he kind of shredded it up a little bit, but Lionel did not black it out. They kept it, but they just kind of kept the damage on it for whatever reason. But that helps out a lot because that makes that diecast possible for a Bristol second place finish. Speaking of Cindric in second place, I feel bad for him. <laughs> for Phoenix, again, speaking of Phoenix, he was the championship for or the champion driver last year to win that race for, you know, the Xfinity championship. But at the same time, that very next year in 2021, he was second place to that same race, and he could have been a back to back champion. But, of course, Daniel Hemrick got it before Cindric uh, did, but Hemrick rubbed, rubbed him up very good, and he left a lot of donut marks on Cindric's car, so I am going to make a Cindric custom of that second place as well. And I've already made the Hendrick win, so I'm, I'm kind of doing a lot right now. I've got a bunch of customs. I mean, let's see. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... 11, about 12 coming up here within the next, uh, well, 12 days or so. But there is one detail I want to uh, point out on this car, or two actually. There is a missing decal right here, or a logo right here on that C post. But I want to talk about the hood. Now, the reason I want to talk about the hood, because this was how it looked on the wrecker, on the tow truck. It was lifted up, and it was being pulled. You know, of course, it had the, the hood open to kind of get in there and hook everything up to drag it away. But it was very hard to dent it to how it was before the hood opened. So I figured it'd be much easier and kind of look better to just open up the hood and have it sitting there. And no, I did not use hinges, but I will reveal on how I actually got that open. So uh, we're just going to look at it differently. We're going to do the hood first, but it's in a very odd angle. If you look at right here, it's not very... Uh, you know, not very different, but you got Barger Precast, I believe that's how you say that there. Uh, Xfinity Almendinger, I made, I had to print off that name banner. Got the 16 right there, you can see the roof flaps underneath. Almondinger right there on the back. I did mess up while uh, screwing the, or kind of drilling out the rear window. You can see on that seam, kind of messed it up a little bit. Got uh, Now, I did learn my lesson. This is not High Pierce. This is, in fact, Hyper Ice. And I learned that from a couple of comments on the Indie win. So thank you all so much for that. Again, helps me out on my knowledge a little bit. Now you got the back end that is torn all the bits here. Uh, it is kind of, you know, pulled back. That's how it was on the car. Uh, I got Hyper Ice there. Got the Camaro, which is very scuffed down there. Uh, the very scuffed taillights in the 16. And you can actually kind of see inside the car. That's how it's built on the inside. Uh, you can kind of take a peek back in there. But on this side, you can notice I did use rubber tires, actually. Got Barger precast there. Got a little bit of green and black for the little donut mark there. Hyper ice down at the bottom. Got a little bit of race wear on that tire. Again, it is missing a, a little, I don't remember what sponsor, but it's missing a little sponsor here. Got three winter stickers. I don't remember whether it's from AJ Allmendinger. I got the B post. It's kind of hard to read. I can read a Chevy uh, leaf filter. And I can't tell what that one is there. Got the 16. Got some more uh, roughed up spots there just from 
Uh, some dono marks got a little spark or a spot over here. Got the black uh, side skirts. I uh, can't tell when that one is, but there's Kali companies underneath that. Got Xfinity Series, Mobile One, ARP, and Sunoco, I believe, underneath that. Oh, and if you didn't notice, I am actually missing the right side window because it was a short track and they took out the window, so I did that same thing. I got the tire that's impossible to move because it got some glue holding down in there. Again, I'll, re I'll reveal my secret in a little bit. Got Goodyear there. Got just a bunch of torn up headlight there. Uh, just a whole bunch of damage on the front here. You can see you got a bunch of dirt and grime on the splitter. 16 Simpson Sunoco. Uh, I got part of the Camaro sitting right there on the front. And while we're here, we will take a look at the hood. Uh, you can see in there, kind of, maybe. Now, my mom, I was kind of thinking about, like, because I was wanting to make some little, like, I don't know, little people for, like, some of my die casts kind of make it look like a, uh, I don't know, like a diorama or something. I'm like, hey, do you have anything I could poss uh, possibly kind of use to mold any, like, like, any figurines? It's like, yeah, I got some clay. So I took some of that clay, I made a block, and I put it behind the engine, and I just kind of stuck the hood in there and glued it in. If you're wondering how I got the engine, that is from a very old die cast back in the day when they uh, used to have the engine detail. And I just, I had an old one, I took it out, and I put it in this one. As you can see, the hood's open, there's nothing underneath the hood. Uh, but those little studs on the hood, it is a lot bigger. They are a lot longer, I just had to shave them down a little bit. Uh, that was a pain in the butt, because I was trying not to hurt myself while doing so. Over here, you got the, oh, actually, that yellow is accurate. I made sure these wheels were accurate to the car, by the way. I got some more race damage around the wheels. Take a closer look at that, actually. So you can see all that damage there. You got the, uh, oh, so it was the NOCO Rookie of the Year contender, I'm sorry. He wasn't even a rookie, though. That's, huh, kind of weird. Anyway, I got the 16. Uh, of course, you got the window net down. You got a little bit of damage right here with that. Uh, I guess where the tire blew, kind of shredded a little bit. I got Barger precast there. I got a big old uh, donut mark right here. Got some more uh, race damage. Got a little bit of fuel leakage there. And you can see on the interior, there is no <laughs> dashboard, actually. But the roll cage and everything is actually painted silver. Just like always, you can see the gear shifter in there is painted silver as well. So there's that detail. And speaking of detail, I'm actually going to show you, yes, this is a uh, wobbly car. But this plain rim, I just took the tire off and, you know, kind of kept it like that. So the rivets were kind of screwed up because I had to take this out. So I removed the rivet here. And the same thing here, the rivet is actually right here. And it goes through down to the bottom. So I had to put some glue on the sides to kind of hold it together. So that's what you're seeing kind of on the sides here. Now underneath, you know, got all the detail, the black, the silver, the, the red and all that. Now, if you're wondering, well, will this be for sale? Honestly, I'm not too sure, because I would love to sell this thing, because I know I'd get a pretty decent buck out of it, but at the same time, man, I think this thing's pretty freaking awesome. Now, I may keep it for a while, I may, or may, I may never sell it at all, I'm not too sure, but remember, I still have that Austin Cindric to make as well, so... I'm definitely going to at least keep it around until I have that made that is in the next set of customs, so don't worry. <laughs> and again, I mean, I, I really like this car, so I'm not too sure. Normally, I don't keep any of my artwork. I do it just specifically for selling. And the only reason I do that is because if I just have a spare car lying around, nine times out of ten, I'll turn it into something, you know, customize-wise. And, you know, either get rid of it for profit or... Uh, I'll give it to, like, a friend or somebody on some rare occasion. You know, something like that. Like, I don't know, but this, man, this one's hard to, hard to uh, decide if I want to get rid of it or if I want to keep it. I definitely want to keep it, but I feel like, I don't know if it would be better just to have somebody else have it. But, I'm like, I don't know, man. It's really, <laughs> it's really difficult because I'm also afraid of the hood, too. Like, if that hood gets broken in shipping, that's going to be a whole big deal. Got to ship it back. Got to refund it. All that stuff. So I'm not too sure, man. I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. But it's definitely a really cool piece as of right now. And on top of that, I don't really know where I'm going to put it. But at the same time, again, this thing will look good sitting anywhere. I am about to build on it to my little humble abode. So if I can get a spot for it there, that would be even better. But if not, you know, maybe I'll find something. Uh, but we'll just have to see. But anyway, yeah, once again... 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but let's take it just a quick 360, because I feel like this diecast is not going to get enough love, because, I mean, this thing, it was hard to make, oh, if we can brighten up, there we go, it was hard to make, man, it just, it took a long time, I had to repaint everything, it just, it took a long time, and I'm really proud, I really am, I'm never really super proud of my cars, but I'm like, you know, you know I did all right. No, I actually believe this one was a pretty darn good custom, so I will pat myself on the back for that one. But I don't know, I guess I'll just have to let you guys decide. So with that being said, that'll be all for this diecast review, this custom diecast review, actually. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.